Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Constable Noel Maitland has been remanded in custody until September 16. Constable Noel Maitland has been remanded in custody until September 16. He was remanded following a near two-hour clash between the defense and the prosecution after the prosecution reportedly refused to disclose certain statements collected so far, claiming disclosure could jeopardize the investigation. The senior parish court judge rejected the prosecution's argument, noting that in the spirit of transparency, the documents needed to be disclosed. It was expected that Milton's attorneys would have made a bill application on his behalf, but that temporarily set aside while the matter of disclosure was being sorted out by both parties. The prosecution argues that a partial disclosure had already been made to the defense on August 19. In that disclosure, the defense was given access to a forensics report seen off crimes disc, statements from police officers and civilians, including one from Danielis Donaldson's mother. At least four civilian statements have been disclosed to the defense. The prosecution says it is concerned about protection of the sources of the statements. Efforts to do redactions to the statements have already reported not being effective. The prosecution has maintained that at least one witness has not reported to work for days, after what's been described as certain steps were taken against them. It's feared that full disclosure may put that witness at risk. The prosecution had indicated that they intend to file for a transfer of the matter to the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston. The legal maneuver is being taken after the Crown refused to disclose certain documents to the defense in the matter. Defense attorney Kasten Kennedy Sherman says the defense was ambushed in the proceedings. We are indeed, I would say, ambushed. And so until the next date. Was there, not, was there a, a, a request for the matter to be transferred to the Home Circuit Court? The Crown has indicated that they intend to have the matter transferred on the 16th of September. Okay. But in keeping with our obligations to our clients, we had to do what we had to do, which is to wait on the proper documentation before making an application. Can you say how the case has been hampered for the well, defense? Well, most certainly we do not have a full view of the matter. And so it would have been irresponsible of us to proceed. Yes. The back and forth. Yes. What do you make of it at this point in time, at this stage of, of, of the proceedings? Well, at this stage, we need to see all the documents before we comment on the matter. It is still an early stage of the matter, and so without all the documents, it would be irresponsible to say which way the matter could go. Man killed at party in Westmoreland. A man was shot to death at a party in Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland on Saturday night. He has been identified as 26-year-old Akim Dulcio, otherwise called Bojo. According to the Police Corporate Communications Unit, Akim was shot and killed by unknown assailants at a bar. Reports are thus about 9.45 p.m. Akim was among a group of patrons at a party when two men alighted from a white Toyota Axio and fired several shots. Shortly after the shooting subsided, Akim was found suffering from gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. American man wanted for murder to be extradited. American Ranger Reynolds, who was captured in Kingston last Tuesday, is to be extradited to his homeland to face murder charges. Reynolds this morning waived his right to an extradition hearing in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. He was represented by attorney Matthew Hyatt. Reynolds is wanted in connection with the general murder of 27-year-old Tariq Boot of Virginia. U.S. attorneys said that the murder occurred following an argument between the men. Government and public sector teachers expected to achieve favorable wage agreement. Expectations are high for the government and public sector teachers to come to a favorable agreement for wages and other benefits. Secretary General of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Dr. Mark Nicely, has indicated that a meeting with the Finance Minister last week was fruitful. Speaking at the JTA pre-conference church service on Sunday, Dr. Nasi said the educators will get an update on the matter during the conference. Our sixth session is at 11 a.m. and the major highlight of that session is a report from the Salaries and Conditions of Service Committee. Now we had a meeting with the Minister of Finance last, last week and the soundings were favorable. We have to applaud and commend our permanent uh, secretary, Actin, who flavored the discussions in a positive direction. And we're expecting very soon to receive a response from the Ministry of 
finance and we expect that that response is going to communicate to the nation jamaica that the government of jamaica takes education seriously that the government of jamaica have a very high regard for the nation's teachers and that the government of jamaica has its priorities in the right place teacher exodus causing classroom strategies jta president says no need for alarm Education Minister Fiva Williams confirmed her ministry has received the resignations of 167 teachers since the start of summer. She made the disclosure in a media briefing this morning. Mrs. Williams called the briefing to update the nation on what was being described as a looming teacher shortage ahead of the new school year. Uh, I know that I would have given a couple of interviews last week and indicated to the nation in terms of the number of reports that we would have got of resignations. And I'd indicated that last week at that time, we were seeing 80. The current number that we're looking at, and this is for the period July to present, um, is 167. These resignations we know will impact staffing for the new school year. So let me give um, Jamaicans a sense of who are the new the new pool of teachers and what are their specializations. So we would have gotten uh, figures that says there are 964 specialist teachers who have just completed their program of study and may be available for employment in the government teaching service. Looking at our 2022 teacher training graduates by specialization, I see accounting major with business, I see biology, education double major. Um, I see chemistry teachers coming out, computer science, a double major, computer science with business education, computer science with mathematics. I see 111 early childhood um, education teachers. We have some 29 English double majors, 20 English language and literature. We have 140 mathematics double major, and we're seeing uh, others with double major in maths with business education and so forth. Meanwhile, education stakeholders are appealing for calm amid the mountain concerns regarding the number of teachers migrating ahead of the new school year. There have been increasing reports of a mass exodus of teachers from the education system with many school administrators expressing fears that will not have the necessary staff complement in critical areas such as mathematics and the sciences. Estimates indicated that as much as 400 teachers may leave the classroom before the start of the term on September 5th. But President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Winston Simmet, is appealing to parents to remain calm as educators work through the challenges. One other thing I would say to the nation and to the education sector, one of the worst things to do in a crisis is to panic. Let us just simply remain calm and assess the situation so that we are able to plan and um, execute what is necessary to fix the problem. We know it's going to be very stressful, but one of the realities of teachers leaving. But if we become panic, if we get into the panic mode and the parents start to become panicky, then we are only adding uh, more challenge. We ask the parents to be understanding of the situation facing the education sector at this time. Acting Chief Education Officer Dr. Kisan Troop agrees. She says the challenge being faced by the Education Ministry is not unique to Jamaica. She told reporters that the Ministry is doing all it can to prepare for a smooth start to the new school year. We just really want to keep the system calm at this time and we want to be guided by the data. I know our principals are very concerned um, with what is happening. And as you recognize, it's a global situation. It's not a Jamaica situation. So we are concerned what is happening in the education sector locally and globally. And what happens globally impacts us, as you know. So we are concerned about that. And we have come up with facilities and strategies that we will be communicating very shortly. Head buried in sun. Declaring that Education Minister Fever Williams head remains in the sun. Opposition Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Southeastern Julian Robinson has said that it is time for the government to step in and address the unfolding teacher migration crisis. Robinson noted that this is the number one issue facing the country only two weeks before the start of the new school year. The lawmaker said consultation in his constituency revealed that almost two dozen teachers have resigned from Campion College. He said teachers of science, two English, one math, and another for Spanish from a secondary institution 
which he did not name, have resigned and said to leave the island for the teaching jobs overseas. Now I want to say to the government, take your head out of the sand. Stop behaving like nothing not going on. We have a crisis, and two weeks before school start, these principals cannot hire replacement teachers on time, Robinson charged at his constituency conference Sunday evening. Robinson said the education sector is facing nothing short of crisis, noting that the only avenue for economic growth and for the goal of an inclusive, equitable society is through education. They are not taking entire level teachers. They are taking teachers with masters. They are taking the best, Robinson said, of recruiters. We need to recognize that we have a crisis and put a plan in place, he added. Robinson said the students will suffer the most are those with poor household. Jamaica has a problem. It is compounded because we are going through a public sector salary compensation review, which nobody knows anything about, said Robinson. He said teachers are not clear what their salaries will be after the process and are not willing to stick around until a cloud of uncertainty. Robinson challenged Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark to consult with and inform critical stakeholders about the review process to limit further fallout. The Member of Parliament said that while there are no easy solutions to fix the problem, William's strategy to ignore it will not make it go away. The principals are telling you, they are seeing it in the numbers, and the numbers will continue to get worse, said Robinson. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.